the Soviet Union, was able to launch Sputnik 1 into orbit, on October 4, 1957. The United States couldn't afford, to allow another nation, to be the first to land a man on the moon. Being the leader of the space race, was a matter of pride for our nation. On July 29, 1958, NASA was established, with a yearly budget of $58 million. That budget climbed yearly, and NASA's budget for 2018 is $20,736,000,000, or $52 million per day. On July 16, 1969, NASA launched Apollo 11 to space, with the Moon being its destination. The Apollo 11 was equipped with five F-1 rocket engines. The thrust generated from those engines totaled 7.5 million pounds. Those five rocket engines had to propel 6,100,000 pounds, or 3,050 tons, to space. Their plan was, to do it in stages. All they had to do was get 3,050 tons to a speed of 24,200 miles per hour to get to the moon. It was all planned on paper by professionals. But wait. Werner von Braun said, it is commonly believed, that man will fly directly from the Earth, to the moon, but to do this, we would require a vehicle of such gigantic proportions, that it would prove an economic impossibility. It would have to develop sufficient speed to penetrate the atmosphere, and overcome the Earth's gravity. Did we get to the moon? Mission Commander Neil Armstrong and pilot Buzz Aldrin said, we did, but did they really? Surely the videos of the moon landing were real, because we all saw it on television. We even heard President Nixon make a phone call to Buzz and Neil. The videos are reviewable, for those who have any uncertainty. That's where I get involved. President Ronald Reagan once said, Trust, but verify. When extraordinary claims are made, extraordinary objective verification is needed. Nothing gets to space. Nothing ever has, and nothing ever will get to space. The requirements to get to space, include both sufficient speed and fuel, to overcome the force that keeps things on Earth, more specifically, an object's density or weight, including the rocket, fuel, supplies, food, spacesuits, oxygen, crew, batteries, testing equipment, lunar module, and command module. None of those mentioned items, contributes to propelling the rocket to space. When all that cargo takes up space, that means there is less room for fuel. The rocket weighed 3,050 tons. Some of that weight, will be discharged during the stages, but it still falls significantly short, to even make it close to space. The furthest a rocket can climb against its own weight, while pushing through the drag of our atmosphere plane, doesn't allow any rockets to even get near space. Rockets go up, just far enough out of view, and then fall back down to Earth every single time. Rockets go up, then back down to Earth every time. Surely, our government wouldn't lie. Or would they? If getting a rocket to space is impossible, how did Buzz and Neil get to the moon? To be honest, no one has been to the moon. No person or vehicle has ever been to space. The mission to get to the moon, let alone space, is impossible. So how did NASA do it? We have been lied to. I don't know all the specifics of what NASA did to fool the world, but they did. How they lead, is not as important as the fact that they lead. It's nearly impossible, to objectively verify the claims of NASA, because nobody has the resources and funding of NASA. That differentiates NASA from regular people. There is so much misleading, and blatantly incorrect information, that nobody can objectively verify their claims. Is all hope lost to find the truth? No, we must tirelessly demand objective and verifiable proof. We should verify all claims concerning rockets, 
especially since getting to space is impossible. That leads me to the Civilian Space Exploration Team, known as CSXT. On July 14, 2014, the CSXT team launched a rocket called GoFast. That rocket was launched from Black Rock Desert in Nevada, and their claimed success can be reviewed here. They claimed their rocket reached a maximum speed of 3,580 miles per hour and a height of 73.07 miles. The launch was reviewed and certified by FAA after analysis of the data from the Recovered Military Grade Inertial Measurement Unit, or IMU, was concluded. How can we objectively verify their claim, besides trusting the CSXT team and the review and certification by the FAA? We can review the video of the launch and do some research to see if their claims make sense. You can see the Go Fast launch video here. While reviewing the onboard camera launch video, the heights didn't appear accurate. Anyone who has ever been in an airplane, should realize the observation of the ground terrain in the video, doesn't look as high as claimed. In the video, the thrust exhaust from the rocket, lasts about 30 seconds. The rocket appeared to still be ascending, even after the ammonia perchlorate rocket fuel had been completely exhausted. The ascent continued for about another 30 seconds, until the yo-yo despin mechanism was activated. After about 10 more seconds, the top portion of the rocket separated from the lower portion. During this time, the rocket was stabilized enough to review the landscape below. After a total of 80 seconds after the launch, the rocket started tumbling downward. During the 20 second span, between the yo-yo despin and the rocket's tumble, I was able to review some still video images. The first image shows a distinct white shaped landmark. Comparing that image, inverted, to the second image using Google Earth, at 2 miles high, the images appear to be the same size. From the GoFast rocket camera, please note the guitar shaped landmark in the upper right. From Google Earth, at 2 miles elevation, please note identical landmark. In the third image, a circle crop field cluster can be seen, inverted. The fourth image obtained from Google Earth captures that same circle crop field cluster, and it appears the same size as what appears on the rocket at 2 miles elevation. From the GoFast rocket camera, they claim 70 miles elevation. Please note crop cluster. From Google Earth, 2 miles up. Please note same cluster. Lastly, the fifth image from the rocket shows a wide appearing land structure, in the shape of a duck as in the Google Map image, at an elevation of 2 miles. Both structures appear the same comparable size. From the GoFast rocket camera, please note the duck-shaped landmark. From Google Earth, 2 miles up. Please note identical duck-shaped landmark. I have no affiliation with the CSXT team, or the FAA, and I believe, my review of the launch video is objective. I insist, the Go Fast rocket did not attain its claimed altitude, but did reach a confirmed height of approximately 2 miles. The FAA, may need to review, and correct its certification, of the 2014 CSXT rocket launch, and the Wikipedia page, and any other source that wrongfully claims the rocket achieved a rocket elevation of 73.07 miles. Remember, nothing gets to space. I don't want you to take my word for it, I want you to do your own research, and come to your own conclusions. Thanks for watching.